It's time for Legends of the Diamond, a show where I talk about some of the greatest professional baseball players ever to play the game that you might not know. The next player is fit for a season finale, and it is someone who might be more well known than anyone else I've talked about this season, as he was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame for his playing days. That's right, I'm talking about James Thomas, Cool Papa Bell. One time he hit a line drive right past my ear. I turned around and saw the ball hit him sliding in a second. That is a quote from Satchel Page that is displayed on James Thomas Cool Papa Bell's Hall of Fame page on BaseballHall.org. And that quote is meant to display Cool Papa's ridiculous, dare I say ludicrous, speed. Born James Thomas Nichols on May 17, 1903 to a widowed Mary Nichols in Starkville, Mississippi. At a young age, according to an article by Dave Wilkie on the Society for American Baseball Research website, Cool Papa helped on his grandfather's farm. Cool Pop also worked in a creamery at the Agricultural and Mechanical College in Starkville, now Mississippi State University, and at its Agricultural Experiment Station where he learned to grade cotton. Baseball was a part of his life during the summer as well, with Cool Papa playing ball at age 10 with the memory of being asked to pitch in a men's game at a picnic. He is quoted as saying that he struck out eight guys in three innings and got the best hitter to ground out. He later singled, stole second, and scored despite some thinking he was too small to play with the adults. At age 17, Cool Papa moved to St. Louis to live with other family members, and he was forced to change his name to Bell because he was told he needed his father's name. He quickly got back on the diamond playing playing for the Compton Hill Cubs in 1920. In a box score in the St. Louis Argus, Bell is listed as a pitcher in a 15-4 win. A few years later, Cool Papa got his big chance to play at a higher level. In 1922, he struck out eight on the mound for the East St. Louis Cubs in a 9-1 loss to the Negro National League St. Louis All-Stars. The All-Stars signed Cool Papa immediately, and he was paid $90 a month. Bell was a knuckleball pitcher in the beginning, and he also earned his Cool Papa nickname. St. Louis All-Stars manager Bill Gatewood is credited with the origin. He said Bell was cool under pressure after striking out Oscar Charleston in a big-time situation. As a pitcher in his first season with the All-Stars, Cool Papa was 7-7 seven and seven with one shutout. He also had 10 hits and 31 at-bats, including a home run and two doubles. That was the beginning of a career that included several years in the Mexican League and 21 seasons of winter ball in Cuba, Mexico, and California. He was with the St. Louis All-Stars from 1922 to 1931. Gatewood helped Cool Papa grow his skills while with the All-Stars. He had him play in the outfield and also had him hit lefty. This, of course, was to get him into the lineup every day and to get Cool Papa to use his speed to leg out hits. Cool Papa became a switch hitter because of this. He was a pitcher and outfielder from 1922 to 1924 and pitched some in 1925, but he only had a few recorded appearances on the mound after that. In 1923, he was 11-7 with 9 complete games. He was also 26 for 108 at the plate with 17 RBIs, 5 doubles, and 2 home runs. At age 22 in 1925, he batted 309 in 304 at-bats and stole 13 bases. He hit 5 home runs and 19 doubles that year as well. He batted over 300 in 1926, 1927, and 1928. He also batted over 300 in 1929 playing with two teams, the All-Stars and the Chicago American Giants. He is recorded as stealing 47 bases in three seasons from 1927 to 29, but it is most likely much more. He batted 346 in 1930 and 179 known at bats, but not much is known from 1931. In fact, many great games aren't known because some games weren't officially recorded. Cool Papa is quoted as saying that one game he had five hits and five stolen bases, but no one remembered to bring the scorebook that game, so it was never recorded. In 1932, he played for the Homestead Grays, the Kansas City Monarchs, and the Detroit Wolves. He had a 373 average. 
Cool Papa joined the Pittsburgh Crawfords from 1933 to 1937 and had an average well over 300. He is also reported to have stolen 175 bases in a 200 game season in 1933. He played in the Mexican League for several years following his time with the Crawfords. One of his best seasons came in 1940 with Veracruz. In 89 games, he had a 437 batting average and added 12 home runs, 15 triples, 79 RBIs, and 119 runs scored. Cool Papa Bell ended up hitting 367 and scored 310 runs in just 287 games in the Mexican League, which he did enjoy because of its more relaxed racial atmosphere. When he came back to the States to play for the Chicago American Giants in 1942, he had 21 hits and 59 known at bats. Cool Papa closed his career with the Homestead Grays from 1943 to 1946, and he had an average well over 300, surprise, surprise. He was, of course, in his 40s at the time. Overall, in his career, from what we know, Cool Papa finished with 1,259 hits and 3,963 at bats. His career OPS, or on base plus slugging percentage, is 7. 92. He had 220 RBIs, 183 doubles, and 851 runs scored. Then comes his speed. One legend says that he can circle the base paths in just 12 seconds flat. He also was known to go from first to third on a bunt, score from second base on a sacrifice fly, steal two bases on one pitch, and score from second on a ground ball. Former manager Buck O'Neill wrote about Cool Papa in his autobiography. He said that technique cutting corners and keeping balance is as important as speed when stealing bases. He said Cole Papa was a master of it all. And as for hitting, Bell might not have been in the MLB, but he played exhibition games against some of the best pitchers and is reported to have a 381 average against MLB competition in 54 games between the 1930s and 1940s. Cool Papa managed the Kansas City Monarchs later in the 40s and is credited with finding Ernie Banks. He also helped Jackie Robinson during the integration process into the major leagues and even played a few more times after that. Following baseball, Cool Papa moved back to St. Louis with his wife Clarabelle. He was a night watchman for the St. Louis City Hall, a job that earned him $123 a month for a pension. Of course, Cool Papa still went to St. Louis Cardinals games and he was later asked to help young players after he retired. The Dodgers asked him to help help Maury Wills with his base running, Wills stole 104 bases in 1962. He also talked with Lou Brock when he was young. Brock stole 118 bases in 1974. That same year that Brock dazzled on the base paths, Cool Papa was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. At the time, he was just the fifth Negro Leagues player to ever be inducted, joining Satchel Paige, Josh Gibson, Buck Leonard, and Monty Irvin. Cool Papa Bell died on March 7, 1991 at the age of 87 after a heart attack he died just two weeks after his wife but the lightning speed of cool papa bell is a legend that should never die i'm anthony yozo and this is legends of the diamond thank you for liking and subscribing this has been a fun season talking about these greats and look for more players to be highlighted in future seasons if there is anyone you would like me to research for this show please leave the name in the comments